Hi, this is Patrick for Motion VFX, and today I am happy to be showing off M buttons for DaVinci Resolve. M buttons is a pack of 28 title elements for DaVinci Resolve that you can use to add specific calls to action in your videos. With these graphic elements, you can emphasize your message and convince viewers to take that next step. These graphics are great for vlogs, social media videos, product presentations, and more. Say this man is a musical artist who has just released a brand new single and wants to promote that song alongside his various social media. And we can do that by opening our effects library and in toolbox going to titles, motion VFX, M buttons. And here we will have all 28 presets for us to use. You can preview any of these just by dragging your cursor back and forth over the name of the effect. And if you want to save any of these presets to your favorites, you can just click this little star to the right of each preset name. I'm gonna start by zooming in a little bit and then dragging button 04 right onto my timeline towards the end of this clip. We can watch through this preset to make sure it is at a starting point we want. Then we can close the effects library and we are going to, uh, with that preset selected, open the inspector. Like a lot of our motion VFX plugins, you do have this in and out animation. You see it draws on this shape here, but if we wanted that to pop on, we could always uncheck that in animation and it would pop right on and instead do that animation on its out instead. But here we do want animation in and out, so I will keep those. And then underneath that, we have content controls. These are your master transform options. I want this a little bit more on this uh, right side of our screen. So I'll move that over and down a little bit. And I'll probably leave that about there for now. But underneath those content controls, we have text controls. By default, this is learn more, but in this instance, I want to make this instead listen here. Then even when that animates on, it will still fit very nicely inside that box. And I can even add further customization like this color. It will pull up this window and I can pick screen color, which will let me pick any existing color in my screen. I'm gonna pick a nice, really light blue. Here I can pick any existing color in my frame. I'm gonna try to grab a pretty nice blue and then I will even uh, lighten that up just a, a bit or maybe more than a bit in this color panel. I can click OK and that will set that uh, text color to this really great light blue color. And finally, with the other graphic elements we have going on in this scene, we do have this cursor that comes into our screen. Uh, but with the other things we're going to have going on, I actually don't want this in our frame. So we can come down to pointer controls in the inspector and just uncheck pointer and that will completely take that away. So we just have this nice uh, text featured in this box, nice on screen, and then it animates out. Moving on, I am going to add another logo that begins uh, right over this first. Uh, so to give myself some room to work, I will close my inspector, open back up this effects library, and I'm going to grab button 12. I'm gonna drag this onto my scene, and I'm actually gonna drag this onto uh, video track three. So it will be over that button four title we already created. And then when I select that, uh, close my effects library, open back up my inspector. I have some of those same controls, but some different ones. And here, if we uh, scrub through and preview, we have this uh, nice logo come in right in the middle of our scene. But this graphic, I do actually want to be positioned right over this graphic for we already pulled in. So in content controls, I can slide this button over and then up. So we'll have this really nice extra stack effect and then we can go on with some further customization. A big one is this blue color. In some scenes, this might look great, but we have much more of like an earthy tone. We have lots of greens and browns. I really love this green color in his headphones. So what we can immediately do is come down to elements, controls, and we have a few options. And as we scrub through, you can see this uh, colored ring comes on and then we have this uh, second one that sort of slides through. And in the inspector, these are these two rings here. You can always turn them completely off if you want to. But instead, I can pull up this ring one color, select the same pop-out menu, and click uh, pick screen color, and then choose uh, one of these really great colors on these headphones, just a nice dark green here. This will be a starting point. And then I'm actually gonna just pull up this saturation a little bit and brighten it up a hair. So that, especially over this graphic, this like dark forest green really comes through. And then if I want to use this color elsewhere in our scene, I can just copy this HTML code and if I click OK, then back up in text one controls, we have this button color. I can click that pop out, paste in that HTML color, and we get that same green. And then the last big uh, color left of that blue was in this circle control. So I can come down, select that blue, paste in that green, and then I can actually leave that red as an accent. That should look great. 
And you know what? This element is so dynamic. I actually think I want this more by itself. So I will drag this a little bit back in my timeline and then I can actually drag that back to track two. And so with that more on its own, I'll actually bring that position back down a little bit so that is more uh, just highlighting itself in this open space. But of course, the last big element in this shot is this drop zone. In my inspector, I will just tidy up a bit and then I can come to drop zone controls. I will open that up and we have this drop zone uh, file where we can search for the specific file we want to load in. I have this avatar file I want to use. I can select that, click open, and that will load in an image. And then we have these extra drop zone controls. I want to pull our media scale down quite a bit. And then I can change that position inside of this circle. Great, especially if this is album art or his avatar on social media, this would look great in this scene. I ran our quick cache, so now we can play through our scene. We have this avatar popping up, this animation that runs through, animates back off, it looks great, and we can move on. And we're gonna do that by opening up our effects library again and pulling in button 21. I'm gonna drag this to the position we originally had this uh, button 12. I can close that effects library now. Uh, one that starts to overlap with this button four. And this will be one of the big announcement pieces for this clip. I can make sure that's selected. Inspector, I'm gonna drag that. Uh, I will preview it over this lesson here, but I will drag that over, slide it up, and I'm actually gonna scale up this entire graphic a bit. And this preset has two main text layers. We have this first, and then the second. So we want to open up text one controls. And in here, I'm going to type in new song. And in text two, I'm going to type in is out now. And as you can see, when I type that in, this background dynamically responds and stretches. So you never have to adjust that independently of your text. I will close those options for now. And I'm gonna move to button controls for now because I want to look at this red color, which does also, I might open back up, exist on this new song. These do rotate colors. So the text is red for this first part and the background is white and then it switches for the second text. And for this, why not even go back to our previous example and grab this green we already pulled in? So I can open up elements controls, I click on the screen, pulled in that color code, then back on 21, paste that in for this text and slide down and paste it in for this second button as well. If we quickly scrub through that, it'll come on, new song is out now. We have that click coming in as well, and it slides back off to new song. I might adjust these master controls just a little bit to make sure it's a little more centered with this lesson here, but with something that big and bold, this will be really eye-catching, really pulling the viewer's attention. We're going to uh, pull in one final title. So I'll actually uh, move my timeline around a bit, give us a little more room to work, open back up my effects library, and I'm gonna pull in button 10. I will drag that over to track three, and this one will be interesting uh, because this by default is this Facebook logo that pops up. But here in our inspector, I will close my effects library. We have these logo controls and we can very quickly choose between a lot of the really popular social media. If I want this to be the Instagram logo, I can move that over or even things like Patreon, Twitch, uh, YouTube. We've got lots of options. Or you can import your own custom logo here uh, with a similar uh, browse feature that we saw earlier when we loaded in that avatar. And to really demonstrate the flexibility of this preset, I'm gonna start by just doing an Instagram logo. And here I can scale this down. I'm going to slide this over uh, more into this bottom left corner. And I'm gonna start with this logo here. But then I am going to click Alt and Shift and click that M button effect and slide it right up. And now I'll drag a copy uh, to this open video track above it. Then I can change that to something like Twitter and you can see you have a little bit of overlap here, but I can then change the content controls for that, slide it back up, and hey, we can do that entire process one more time, and change that to something else like YouTube, slide it back up again, and then a reposition, and now we have these three social media in our scene, and because these effects are dynamic, I can then pull in the uh, starting points 
uh, for these other social media. So now when they come in, they will come in one after another. And if I jump forward, because these effects all end at the same time, that even though they are staggered coming in, they will all animate out at the exact same time. Now, this does get interesting because you see these each do have their own cursor, uh, but that can be a little confusing. So I'm gonna go in and check off those pointers for all three of those. And that looks pretty good, we can move on. And we're still working on this last effect, but we are going to come back up to our effects library and drag in the cursor preset. Again, I'm gonna put that over uh, all three of these effects I have here. Close my effects library, and then in my viewer, in the bottom left, I have this drop down menu, and I'm gonna come do fusion overlay. So that will show you a few things. You have uh, this main uh, outline box that controls this cursor itself, but you also have this small inside box. And when this animation plays in, you'll see uh, when the cursor crosses that box, it goes from this general cursor to this active selection cursor. And if we actually shrink the size of this box, then that will control uh, the point at which uh, during the animation, it goes to that secondary cursor. Uh, I'm gonna move this cursor to be over this Twitter logo. And if I click and drag the center point, it will move that cursor. Uh, but note that even though it does not move the center box, the smaller box still relatively applies to the same area. So I can move this point directly over the Twitter logo. So now that will slide in and be over the Twitter logo. And then I just want to uh, find the rough area uh, that encompasses that logo. So now I can just pull this box in uh, to be even smaller, but that should be directly over the Twitter logo. So now when that slides in, uh, the Twitter logo would come up and then as it mouses over, it has the same selection. I don't think I want the logo to stay on that long, so I can shrink that quite a bit. And I might even shrink the general length of these graphics here. But back in cursor, uh, we have some more options. This hover option is what changes from the cursor to the hand. If you just wanted to hand the entire time, you could do that, or even cursor the entire time. But I can uh, toggle off this fusion overlay, close my inspector for now. And if I play through the scene, we have some really eye-catching effects that advertise the social media, advertise the artist, and then uh, eventually get to showing off that, hey, this artist has a new song, it's out now, and you can listen, and then you can provide a link in bio or anywhere else in your post, and have a really great eye-catching social media post or a promo video that you can do absolutely anything with. We're happy to bring AMA buttons to DaVinci Resolve, and if you want any more information, we already have a video that George has done walking through this pack with a product presentation as a sample, and you can see that video or learn more about M buttons for DaVinci Resolve or any of our other preset packs at MotionVFX.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.